Carlos is next up, ready to talk about spirituality and the mind's power. How are you guys doing tonight? Are you guys up there? Good? All right. So here's the clicker. So I'm going to talk about spirituality and the mind's power to change our environment. So I'm going to start by walking you guys through the same path that I walked uh, in this, um, this interesting world of uh, changing the environment. So I started by uh, being interested in dream symbolism and the significance of dreams. So I naturally bumped into Carl Gustav Jung, who is a Swiss psychologist, who is known as one of Sigmund Freud's disciples. And he is important because he's the one who really pushed the boundary between our thoughts and reality. So composite stuff and our thoughts. So I'm also going to talk about um, how in the morning we can start by thinking how our day is going to be and how remarkable the results are. So for example, in the documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know, there was a physicist who said that he visualized his day every morning and that it was amazing how the day would change according to uh, what he was visualizing. So uh, to tie the idea of the symbols that Carl Jung was talking about to this type of visualizing in the morning, you can uh, kind of project the symbols you want so you can learn from the symbols in your dreams, but at the same time, you can also uh, use the symbolism in the morning to, uh, to project what's going to happen in the future. So in order to uh, see how uh, this relates, we need to explore the gap between mind and matter. So there is uh, a connection between our thoughts and outside reality. So quantum physics helps us to get to this point. So I'm no physicist, but I do know that um, at the subatomic uh, level, there are completely different laws. So at the subatomic level, there's complete chaos. And no apple ever fell on Newton's head. So it is a completely different world. So in this subatomic level, uh, what, like, physicists would tell you that the building blocks of our bodies are atoms, correct? But these atoms are, like one atom would be the size of a tennis ball here in Boston, and the next atom that's interacting with this atom would be in Chicago, and it'll also be the size of a tennis ball. And the space between this atom and that atom is complete, complete nothingness. It's emptiness. So in reality, the building blocks of our bodies are atoms, but the space between atoms is nothing. So in reality, the composition of our bodies is nothing. So 99% of our bodies is complete air, complete nothingness. And curiously, if you think about our thoughts and the mind, if you were to ask somebody, where is the mind? Can you point to the mind at this moment? you wouldn't be able to do so because the mind is really nowhere either. So the mind kind of is nothing, and our bodies are 99% nothing. So in reality, our minds and the outside reality, they're the same, they have the same composition, this emptiness, this composition of emptiness. So when we think about the fact that composite nature is empty, and that our bodies are also composite nature, and they're also empty, so the composition of the outside environment and our bodies is complete emptiness, so there is really no difference between the outside environment and, and, and us. So now that we've talked about the fact that there is complete emptiness, how can we travel this sea of emptiness? The only way to do this is through spirituality, because spirituality is what ties our, uh, our relationship with the outside environment. So I'm going to talk about the, spiritual, the path of spirituality that has worked for me, which is uh, Tibetan Buddhism. So many of you maybe are familiar with the figure of the Dalai Lama, and he is the head of Tibetan Buddhism in the world. So uh, just like him, there are many other masters who uh, teach this type of, of, of meditation. So what Buddhism tells you in the first place would be that the problem between your perception of separate self to the outside environment. So now that we've declared that uh, we're both empty, what is the different... What is the factor that is leaving our relationship with the environment out of sync? That factor is our perception. So the first thing that this type of lamas would tell you is that we need to change our perception. So perception is really what changes our outside environment. So in order to do this, there are two main branches uh, to change this environment. So one of them would be uh, meditation, like Jeff was talking about, and also prayer. So 
I'm going to tie the idea of visualizing your day in the morning to a common Buddhist prayer, which is called the prayer to the eight auspicious symbols. So this, what I have right here, maybe you guys can see out there in the, in the back, but these are the eight auspicious symbols, okay? So there is a prayer in the morning, and the lamas indicate that you do this prayer and visualize these symbols. So once you do, the symbols really tap into the back of your mind, and you're using really the symbols to change the outside environment. And they say that if you make this prayer every morning, you're going to have a good day. And if you have a special event that day, you'll be victorious. And I made sure to make that prayer this morning. <laughs> so uh, thank you. So um, <laughs> using prayer is a Im very important tool. And a lot of people take it for granted. And it's really important to use prayer in, from the viewpoint of uh, introspection. And also, meditation is really the key. Because meditation is really what's going to change the fundamental perception of your mind. Through meditation and through being very uh, co consequential with, with meditation and, and persuasive with it, you will be able to lay the, ground, the, the, the foundation to shed this negativity uh, that you have accumulated through, through, uh, through this life and, as we Buddhists believe, in past lives as well. So uh, I'm going to leave you guys with a little quiz. So look at this guy. This guy, he kind of looks like a shaman, and on his left hand, he's holding a, uh, a human femur, and he uses this femur to blow, and, and supposedly some uh, demons come, and he has this meditation in which he visualizes as, as food, and, he, and he's giving himself as, as food to these demons. Okay, so what is the difference between this guy and this guy? All right, in reality, the difference is that there is no difference. They're both Tibetan spiritual masters. So, this guy is kind of wild and, you know, kind of like a shaman. And the lama, he happens to be my lama, who is um, a director of a monastery in India. And he has taught me everything about Buddhism. And this just goes to show you uh, that the, the wild mind of a yogi on, on your right can also be interpreted as, as this path uh, for teaching people like us who need this type of teachings in order to become a better, a better person. So uh, that's basically what I have today. Uh, thank you guys very much. <laughs>